All right. Welcome to the vlog. I have a funny one. I actually have been having good ideas. Um, and so I don't know if I will publish one now and wait or just publish a few. Uh, apologies for the interviews. I have two amazing interviews and I just, the times they have suggested just are not working with me due to my schedule these days with work and everything. So apologies and I apologize uh, to those amazing martial artists too. What I wanted to talk about is, is something very funny. You know, I was um, no surprise that I am, no surprise, I mean, if you know me, I'm a big fan of uh, Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings. Big fan. I love uh, a lot of things about Tolkien. The person, the historical person, when you study his life, fascinating. And I like the Middle Earth and the mythology he created, especially the Lord of the Rings story and all of that. And so I realize it's not very significant to a lot of listeners here because you come here for martial arts so you may think oh, it's disconnected this is probably i don't have a lot of listeners because i like i'm fascinated about these connections but they're not very relevant to people so i've made my choice which is to not be popular and to talk about the things that i'm interested in one interesting thing that tolkien said is that he dis he despised i don't know if he said it like that i don't think so he didn't like allegory. And I just find a lot of a lot of connection with martial arts, especially when you have a training program, what some people call the, um, I call it the curriculum, the martial arts curriculum, um, the training program, the system, which is what I think martial arts are, training programs for the acquisition of skill of a certain type, rooted in body mechanics and body-mind unity. I just, I just define martial arts. Jared Wilson, that one's for you. Um, but, you know, the martial arts have in the, in, the, in the program, the forms, which I've talked about. Some martial arts don't have forms, a lot of them do. And the drills, which are, I, all martial arts have, right? Because, you know, you need to fail. You need to put something in between no skill and skill in a violent confrontation. And that is a very difficult thing. And so you have to put things in one of those is drills. Drills in itself is just an entire war. But then we go to the forms, you know. So, you know, a lot of people, you will see YouTube videos and articles and talk to people that, say things like this. Oh, you know, I've been doing this kata or this form. And all of a sudden I realize that what I'm doing here is not what I thought, which many times is nothing, because many times we don't have an explanation of what these things are, which I support as a good thing because you have to come up with your own conclusions for this to mean anything to you. If you're a parrot repeating what a book or someone told you this thing means, that I'm five dollars will give you a coffee. So, so anyway, you have these revelations and say, oh yeah, I realized this was a, you know, this was not a block. This was a joint um, manipulation or, or break or elbow break or something, whatever. Those revelations are good. They're good. But there's two conditions for me to agree that those revelations are really, really helpful. One is that it comes from you. And even if you heard it from your teacher or something, make it yours through training. Make it yours through non-cooperative training. Otherwise, it's meaningless, you know? Just because you're doing something doesn't mean you can make it work. You have to be able to make it work through the right coordination, through the right body mechanics. That's where the subtlety expresses itself. In the air, it's very hard to express the subtlety because you don't have anything to fine-tune it. The air is just a foundation. But the second condition, and this is the tricky one, the one I'm connecting to Tolkien, you'll see, is that you don't limit it there. In other words, 
the fact that this particular movement all of a sudden has become a revelation for you and it means these is fine, but only as a step in a very long, lifelong journey of continuous revelations that the forms will give you. It will continue speaking to you as long as you keep training, which means doing the form and applying every little aspect in the form in, in, in life non-cooperative training. Don't limit it. And, and that is a very tricky thing. I observe the world and the human mind has a particular sort of behavior in which when it finds some sort of explanation that intellectually clicks, even though it doesn't actually click because you haven't trained enough, it stops being curious and it stops wondering. It's almost like the mind feels uncomfortable with the churning and it needs some sort of explanation which is really not who cares. And then we, ah, oh, it's that, boom, move on. In that sense, it's actually detrimental to your progress. So if you're watching a video and say, oh, this means that, oh, pff, I've been training three years, this and now I realize it's that. It's good if it makes you train, if it makes you curious, or if you say, oh, that's the same thing I felt a while ago, but now I'm onto something else. But it's bad if you go, oh, now I know what it is. Checkbox, I don't have to worry about that. Because listen to me. It's not that anybody is trying to hide those things. So if you think that your kata has all these mysterious meanings and part of the martial arts lore is to keep them hidden, that's not it. There would be a book telling you exactly, or someone would tell you exactly what each movement is. The reason we don't do that is because it's not possible. Because every little thing can be so many things. And the entire point of the training is that this goes in layers of development. So those revelations... Those breakthroughs are very useful and they happen through the journey sparingly or maybe not sparingly, but I mean every now and then to keep you motivated, to keep you learning. But don't take them as absolutes. The fact that somebody realized something doesn't mean it's that. That's just one step. And the problem of the human mind is how it tends to just put a checkbox and move on and forget about it. Because of that, you have to be very careful about that. You know, because of that, you have to keep yourself in check and say, keep the curiosity, keep learning. Forget about what anybody's saying in any book or your sifu or your sensei. Make it yours. And if someone had a relation or you had a relation, use it as a growth, as a growth notch. What does it have to do with Tolkien? You know, Tolkien was very influenced, obviously, by the wars, the two wars. He was in the first. Uh, World War, and he lived through the times and the the bleakness, darkness of the Second World War. And there's a lot of the Second World War, and probably the first one, in the Lord of the Rings. And a lot of people, you know, came to him even in his lifetime, saying, "Well, do the, the do the orcs mean the German or the Nazis?" And he was very careful to say, "Don't go there. It, my work is not allegorical." Don't go there. But what is really happening here? In truth, his work had to be allegorical. Or not allegorical in this linguistic sense. But it's unavoidable that his influence, influences would have been there. What I believe, and if you're, a, if you're Corey Olsen, uh, whom I greatly admire and follow, or any of the incredible... Um, scholars of Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings, you can correct me on this. But I have a suspicion that Tolkien understood the human mind when he said he was an allegorical. It wasn't that he wasn't. It's not that he says there's no allegory here. It's that he was worried about the oversimplification. I think he was worried that someone would say, oh, in truth, this guy is just putting the, the orcs of the German. Let's move on. See, it's the same thing that I'm telling you about the forms. If you take that explanation as a way to now not be curious and not use it for your own development, then it's working against you. Because it's just one layer out of thousands. And this is what happens in the Lord of the Rings. When you study the Lord of the Rings, um, there are so many layers in which you can, you know, it has a religious interpretation, it has a social interpretation, it has just the enjoyment of the incredible detail that he worked and the languages he worked and the history he built and the geography he built, 
and you can take it for all those and you can spend your whole life discovering layers. He was, he was a genius, right? He spent his whole life building that world that we call Middle Earth. So I don't think that allegory is, is actually bad. I don't think he was saying it's bad. I think what he meant is that most people, when they come up with, when they say, oh, it's allegory, and they come up with an explanation, it makes them move on. They're not curious anymore. They're not wondering anymore because that's how the mind works. The mind just, you know, the moment you have filtered through your filter, then you're not in there curious, learning, and using it to develop yourself. And this is what worries me when I see people in YouTube that say, I've discovered, you know, look, if it was so easy as to tell you this movement means that, it would be in a book and you would move on. What is that doing for you? Now you've become a parrot of what revelation that somebody else had, and you think you can talk in parties about it and impress people? The form is there to make you develop. So number one, whether a revelation is correct or not, this is irrelevant. You have to have your own, because otherwise, how can you use it when your body and your mind are under pressure? And second, nothing in a form is just one thing. I'm telling you, nothing in a form is just one thing. You know, Tolkien, have you ever thought about this? Everything in the Lord of the Rings, everyone has multiple names. Everyone. Everyone has multiple names. Multiple names, he used the languages to justify that. Here's how it was called in the Shire. Here's how this person was called in Elvish, uh, Quenya, Sindarin, uh, you know, the dwarves call him this. Everybody has two, three, four names. Interesting, right? I am telling you, every form, everything you do, every detail in, the, in, in a form that you study means a lot of things for your development. And the entire point of that in the curriculum is for you to discover it, is for you to use it, is for you to take that little thing and experiment with your friend and tell your friend, come to me like a train, don't stop, let me see if I can do this, let me see if I can do it again and again and again and again and again. You know, you know, like my, my teacher was telling me yesterday, George, he, something so amazing, which is like, look, how we train martial arts today, it's just what we can do. But traditionally, it would have taken this little thing, this little aspect, you know, get through with a particular engine of power, particular body mechanics, one thing, and do it 10 years, you know what I mean? That's why when you look at a simple system, it looks simple, and you're, it, you're not catching that. The beauty of it is in the nuance and in the subtlety. And the subtlety means that you would have to train it to make it yours in a way that requires tremendous amount of training. Of course, if you have more or less talent, you may be able to, that's flexible. There's no such thing as saying there's an X amount of time that you need. But it is a lot of training, a lot of training. And so that's the story with, with the forms and the drills. So like Tolkien, I am saying they're not allegorical. They're not allegories. And in truth, they are. But we say they're not because is so much more nuanced and complex and it has so many more layers that what's the point if you most people are going to understand it oh you know now finally this guy in the youtube has revealed what this is now let's move on what is that doing for you my friend use it as a as a way of development it's a system it's a tool of development for you to learn and it'll talk to you it'll speak with you for years and years and years and years and years to come. Keep experimenting, stay curious, and train and test against non-cooperative pressure. Be safe.